Can you work under really high pressure situations while remaining calm? Are you capable of processing mathematics and physics based problems? Speak great English and can make wise decisions under pressure? Are you a technical and analytical person? If the answer to all these questions is yes, then you would make a great pilot. Becoming a pilot is an incredible, rewarding and joyful experience. In fact, few careers spark as much excitement, adventure and intrigue as being a pilot. Since the early days of flight, becoming a pilot and experiencing life from inside the cockpit of some of the newest and most technologically advanced machines on the planet has been a dream of many. But when you're just getting started on this career path, it can feel a bit overwhelming. Well, fear not, because we at Aviation Lifestyle are here to give you the ultimate step-by-step -step guide on how to become a pilot. We've done our research into various piloting schools, and here's what you need to know in order to get started on your dream career. Let's start with step number one, the most important of them all, research. Before you jump into anything, you need to do your research. You do the same if you were starting your own business or selecting a particular college degree, right? Well, in this instance, research is very important because there are so many different types of pilots and their responsibilities differ. For example, you can choose to fly airplanes, gyroplanes, helicopters, sailplanes or gliders, micro lights, balloons or airships. Depending on what type of aircraft you choose to pilot, some licenses may be restricted to your country of residence, while others will allow you to fly in other countries too. And then of course, you can be a commercial pilot, a military one, airline, and so on. The bottom line is that each type of pilot has its own set of requirements, training and qualifications. It's important to know straight off the bat what path you want to go on, so that you don't apply for licenses that you just don't need. Step 2 is to obtain a medical certificate. This is a standard procedure, regardless of what type of pilot you're trying to be. You need this medical certificate from an aviation medical examiner, and the certificate will state that you are physically and mentally fit to fly. Now, we did say that you need a medical certificate no matter what type of pilot license you're trying to get, but these medical certificates are split into three classes. First class, second class, and third class. The class of certificate you're going to get will depend on the type of pilot you're trying to become. The first class medical certificate, for example, is the most comprehensive of them all, and it is required for pilots who will operate commercial aircrafts, including passenger airlines. In order to obtain such a certificate, you will undergo a thorough medical examination, including tests of your mental health, cardiovascular health, hearing, and vision. The second class medical certificate is usually required for pilots who operate non-commercial aircraft, such as private and corporate jets. The standards for this type of examination are slightly lower than the ones of the first class certificate. And lastly, the third class certificate is required for pilots who fly recreational aircrafts, like gliders or light sport aircrafts. The examination is less thorough than the other two and is mainly focused on assessing the pilot's general health and vision. Step 3 is to choose a flight school. Now that you've done your research and you've got the appropriate medical cert, it's time to choose a flight school. Again, research is really important here. You have to make sure that the licenses you will receive upon graduation will actually be useful to you. As we've mentioned before, there are licenses that can only be used in the country you obtain them, while others can be used internationally too. Find the right school for you by looking at its reputation, instructors and their experience, and of course, what type of aircrafts they will teach you on. And of course, you should also consider the cost of training. Flight training can be quite pricey, so it's important to choose a school that fits both your budget and your needs. Step 4 is to start training. The training needed to become a pilot doesn't involve only learning how to fly the aircraft. There is also the so-called ground school, which usually covers the theory of flying, aerodynamics, weather, navigation, and regulations. And of course, the fun part of training, the actual flight, covers the practical aspects of flying such as takeoff, landing, and navigation. This will usually take about 40 to 60 hours of flight time, but it can vary depending on what type of pilot you want to become. Step 5 is to obtain your private pilot license. Once you complete your flight training, you will need to obtain a private pilot's license. This type of license allows you to fly on your own and also carry passengers for non-commercial purposes. You can get your license by passing a written exam and a flight test at the end of your training. This exam will cover all the material that you learn in ground school, and the flight test will cover, well, flying. 
Step six is to build flight time. If you want to get your commercial pilot license, this step is extremely important. You need to build flight time for that type of license. And the best way to do so is by either flying with an instructor, renting an aircraft, or by joining a flying club. The more flight time you have, the more experience you will gain and the better pilot you will become. Step seven is to obtain a commercial pilot license. To become a professional pilot and work in this industry, this is the license you need to obtain. This particular license will allow you to fly for commercial purposes, and in order to obtain it, you will need to meet certain requirements. One of the requirements is exactly what we talked about at step number six. You need to have a minimum amount of flight time. In addition to that, you will need to pass a written exam and another flight test. Step number eight is to get an instrument rating. Once you obtain your commercial pilot license, you should really consider getting an instrument rating too. This is important as it allows you to fly in instrument meteorological conditions or IMCs such as clouds or fog. An instrument rating also allows you to fly more effectively and safely by relying on your instruments to navigate and control the aircraft. And in case you are wondering, yes, there will be additional training needed and you also need to pass a written exam and yet another flight test, but it will be worth it. Step number nine is to build even more flight time and experience. While most people will go straight from step number eight into applying for pilot jobs, the general consensus is that you should actually focus on building more flight time, especially now that you have your instrument rating. This will be really helpful as it builds your credibility as a pilot. You can build more flight time and experience by either working as a flight instructor, charter pilot, or aerial survey pilot. The more experience you have, the better your chances of landing a job with a reputable airline. Now we're ready for step number 10, apply for jobs. The aviation industry is very competitive, so it's important to have that flight time and experience on top of a strong resume and cover letter. It's also good to network with other pilots, instructors, and other aviation professionals. And you can even try job fairs and conferences in order to increase your chances of landing your dream job. Step 11 is to pass the interviews and tests. In order to land a pilot job, you will, of course, have to pass an interview. But certain companies might also want you to pass tests, such as simulator tests, personality assessments, and so on. You need to be prepared for that, as they will ask you not just about your flight experience, but also aviation regulations, and assess whether you're capable of working as part of the team. Throughout this whole process, it's important to keep a positive attitude and show a strong work ethic. Step number 12 might not always happen, but if it does, you should be prepared for it. Complete additional training and certificates. Once you land your dream job as a pilot, you might be required to complete additional training and certifications, such as training on new aircraft types, safety procedures, and emergency situations. In order to be the best at your job and to keep your job, you will need to stay up to date with the latest developments in the aviation industry and continue to learn and improve your skills. Being a pilot is a rewarding career and it can take you literally all over the world. But the question is, do you think you have what it needs to land such a career? Let us know in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon to stay notified every time that we post new videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video. Take care.